Hi, this is Fran with Stampendous, and I'm excited to jump into our next fabulous Friday fun watercolor series. This is class 103. So I will start by reviewing just a little bit from what we covered in class 102, where we ended with these beautiful um, ocean scenes. We talked about a little bit of color mixing to do just some stripes of color. And the way practice helps each one of us, I'll show you that after I did that, I expanded um, and did these two. I painted them both at the same time. And then at the very end, I stamped the little sailboats from this clear set. And you can see how the principles you learned with just thinking of stripes, you can then expand into a beautiful scene. And practice just keeps getting better and better. So I hope you have fun with that. You can go back to 102 if you want to review how we did this look. And now we're going to move into some very new and exciting techniques as well. This lesson 103 is about masking. Two kinds of masking. Masking basically means covering up something. And in the first um, part, we're going to use paper masks, such as I've made here out of some sticky notes, to cover one area so that we can stamp additional areas. The second kind of masking has to do with using a fluid masking pen, in which case we're going to uh, cover up the white of the paper with the masking fluid so that when you paint, um, you can paint all the way across it and remove the masking at the end. So we will cover both kinds here in this lesson. I'm going to be using the poppies from this clear set and I have it already out of the package and our clear stamp simply cling to the clear block and I'm using Versafine ink and to show you here so to get started I'm going to ink up my stamp and start by stamping at the base of my little postcard that I cut and while I'm at it to make my masks I'll stamp again onto the sticky notes and if you want to take two or even three of the sticky notes and your small scissors, you might as well cut the batch of them all at once. And in this case, because it's a very loose design that I'm going to do, I can simply cut a distance away all the way around. And in other cases, I might cut a more precise line, but I've done these ahead. And as you can see here, because I have a group of them, it will now be easy to... Oh, on this one I did the sticky at the bottom, which actually is quite helpful. And so now I can use one of the extras that doesn't even have the impression on it. I can see exactly uh, where I can go next. So now I'm going to stamp again at another angle here. And we'll go this way. Oh, that lifted our sticky note. Not a problem. I'll move this one up. Cover that area. Ink it each time so that you get nice black lines. And now I'll turn this one another angle and stamp there. Okay, that gives you this beautiful field of poppies. Your little sticky notes can be reused. You can save them, put them in an envelope so that you can find them when you're ready. Okay, so let me just do a quick clean up here. Our ink dries pretty quick and I'm ready to paint. I'll mention that in using my palette I've used my Daniel Smith paints in the little tubes. I've got six colors. When you buy the palette from us you get this whole diagram and I recommend placing your colors exactly that way. Replenish just a little bit at a time as needed, which I've done. You can see all the yellows just got refilled. <laughs> and I've got my water system here in reach. Okay, so as we did in 
uh, class 102, I'm going to take a loose approach to this with the poppies. And I've got my wonderful brush, and I've got my blotter, and a little test strip. So I'm going to enjoy these beautiful colors here of rose, and I'm going to get a puddle going. And actually, since I'm just getting started, I'm going to move things out of the way and spritz my palette. Okay, and then my needle tip will allow me to revive my little puddles here. So that we can come in close and see exactly what I'm doing, I'm going to turn my palette, since I'm using a lot of the colors right here, and make sure that you can see exactly what I'm doing with these colors. Okay, so I want to get a nice rich puddle here of rose. Okay, that's looking good. Kind of just clean my brush off to preserve some of that. And then just to keep my colors clean, now I've got my scarlet. Get a good puddle going with that. It's helpful to get each of these colors ready so that you can move quickly between them. Okay, I found I needed to uh, replenish some of my colors in the palette so that I have rose and I have the marine uh, blue and the thalo blue here. And this quadrant will give me a place to uh, mix all of these colors. So I've turned it so that you can see uh, right up close here everything that I'm doing. Okay, so let's start with my brush. Uh, my blotter had a little bit of purple, that's okay. I'm now going to use the rose with the, uh, the thalo blue and create uh, another, I want a more magenta. I got a lot of blue there since I just replenished it. But I'll work in some more here of the, push this back, and get some more of the rows. Okay, so you can see all of the different magenta to purple colors that I'll be able to mix, and there's a place for each of these. Here's my darker purple uh, from the colors here, and my little test strip will allow me to test for several things for how light or dark my color is also how wet it is and um, I always will know what's on my brush before I get to my paper okay so and this is my watercolor paper of course so that I get a nice beautiful effect okay I think I'm going to start with my lighter colors in this palette but I'm going to go from scarlet to rose. So let's see here how our little puddle is looking. Okay, I might want that to be a little bit more intense color so I get a little bit more of the scarlet. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, and I'm going to go for the real splashy look again but I want this beautiful vivid color here so we'll just do some scarlet here and there all the way down assuming that our lighting is coming from here and then without cleaning my brush I'm going to move over here into my rose puddle and see how that's looking I need a bit more color so now next to each of those little swatches of color, I will add rows, and we're just wet on wet again, letting them all kind of mix in together. 
But now I want to add some of these richer uh, magenta purpley colors for contrast. Look how fun this is. And again, because I've got a puddle of each color ready, I can just move from one to another while it's still wet. It's going to mix all together. Okay, and then I will add my darkest purple here. Test it over here. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so there's a different um, spectrum of colors, but it's all beautiful and loose and, and easy to work with. So I'm going to let this dry, and um, then I'll come back later and add the greens. On this one, um, let's see, let me clean my brush here. Okay, so we'll turn this back so that you can... Okay, so we've got yellow with the thalo blue in this compartment, and this allows me to mix all of my, that's a lot of blue. You'll find if you've just replenished your colors and they're very moist, that even less paint is <laughs> needed to get that vivid color going. So I want to dip more into the yellow to get a light green. Even this is, I want more yellow. Okay, we'll push some of this, move it down, have a place for a whole range of greens coming from the yellow and the thalo blue, or the inside blue. And then here I have more of the yellow with the marine blue. And this, this will give me the more olive colors of green. And again, those can be more on the light yellowy side or the darker with more of the blue. And this is my place to mix these colors. And since that's not completely dry, I'll just show you the color I've got here. Oh, and that's pretty dark green, actually. I didn't test it, did I? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush. And I have to mostly wait for this to dry anyway. I just wanted to show you what color green I had. If I'd tested it, I would have known it was darker than intended. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to touch the other wet colors just yet. But I'll show you here that if it's too dark and it's not what you want, you can use your brush as a mop-up to kind of lift or move some of that color around. So anyway, I think the olivey colors work really nice with this range of um, poppy colors. And so we're going to just uh, move on from here, but you can see how you can get a whole range of beautiful greens that you can mix in your palette. Next I want to show you masking what was the hydrangeas, and in the last uh, lesson we made them into primroses simply by doing yellow centers. And then it was another happy discovery that what had been the china pots could also be terracotta pots just by a change of color. So on this one, if you want to, when you cut out your image, if you want perfect uh, lineup between the different images, when you trim your mask, cut right up to or even inside that outer line. And when you stamp, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, space just because of the depth of the paper in between. So if you cut it really close uh, on this one, then you can see that you stamp first what you want to be in front, cover it up with your mask, 
and then when you stamp the next image you can see where it fits behind and on this one you can see I just kept adding uh, different uh, or additional impressions behind and what I discovered on these I had started with a large piece of paper and I had just kept stamping and so my design area got quite large and doesn't fit to my A2 card very well but I wanted to show you a couple variations that I did that were pretty clean like we learned in the first uh, lessons and then I did another one with the splashy approach and this one uh, was quite wild and I just uh, splattered color as well and so Anyway, from this, I got to thinking about the size of the card, and I want to give you a couple of tips about the size of image area for an A2 card. Okay, so this is uh, my helpful tip. If you want to stamp a large image, and you want it to fit on the card, I recommend that you pre-cut the size of panel that you can paint on, that if framed, will fit on the card this way, so you can do a larger, you know, a smaller size if you want to frame it, or simply a little bit bigger size that fits on the A2 card. So let me show you what I discovered. So if your uh, background uh, card base is coming from an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, you can score it at four and a quarter, cut it at five and a half. Each of these folds into a card. So if you want the size, if you want to frame your panel, you can make it the larger size and the inner panel will be the size that fits with the frame on the card. So then this worked out really well. We're using our 9 by 12 paper and I used one of the covers to figure out the perfect layout. Look at this. So this layout gives me two of the small and three of the larger panels with only this little bit left. And so this is an easy way to make good use of your full watercolor sheet and create five watercolor panels. So let's take a look at a couple more cards that I use the masking approach with the, the paper mask to cover up. You can see here that on these, if you want the center one to be in the foreground, you'll of course stamp that first, and then with it covered up, you can stamp to each side. And you can see how using the olive colors of the greens uh, made it really nice with a limited color palette. It's very easy to paint these daisies. Here I've combined um, some of the different flowers together and if there's not much of an overlap the masking is more trouble perhaps than you need if you're just doing side by side but let's do this one to show you how it all comes together uh, making good use of the paper masks so I've got this stamp ready we'll ink it up this versifying ink gives me a nice black black dries quickly and then will be waterproof enough to proceed with our watercolor work. You can see I can reuse these. Cover up your first impression. Ink it each time. So this gives me a beautiful bouquet look here and I can proceed with a whole different color scheme if I want. And I think it would be nice for you to practice doing some softer colors with the rose that give you the lovely pinks that you see here. So I'll paint just a little bit of this to get you started, and then you can do more of it on your own. Okay, so get some clean water. My little rose puddle over here looks pretty good. By testing it, I can see that's still pretty strong color, so I may do a little bit of that first here and there, and then I might blot off some more of the color 
get a little bit more water on my brush. Actually, I can lift some from here. Okay, now that gives me this lighter pink. So just learn how much water, how much paint you need to do pastel to more vivid colors. Let's do some more of this light pink over here. Okay, and then again, if I want, uh, let's see, I might do a little bit deeper color in the centers here. Maybe I'll leave that one white. Maybe do just a little bit more color here, maybe shadow it a little bit. And the unevenness of it is what I think is interesting and fun and just soft color. Okay, so let's see if we can do some lighter lavender colors. And again, we don't want it too puddly wet. I might blot it just a little bit here. And then let's see if we can just keep all of these colors very light value, kind of pastel shades here. Okay. And then if we want a little bit of the soft blue, okay, that's kind of wet, but it's light, so I'm going to go ahead with it. And that is going to dry a little bit lighter, so let's come back in and add just a little bit more. And if I want to add some shadowing now with some of the blue. While the lavender is still wet, they'll mix just a little bit. Okay, so then this area you would allow to dry before you come back in and do your greens on the flowers. And again, um, I'm quite liking the olivey colors that I get from my yellow and uh, the marine blue. And but first that will have to dry. So I'm going to leave you to try that on your own and we will move on to another little project. So we looked at this um, card before where we were doing the real splashy soft colors and in this case I stamped off the edges all the way around having determined what size uh, watercolor panel I had to start with. So with the masking option, let me show you kind of a reverse option of that. And I took some scrap paper just to decide um, and kind of plan out some things. And I found that if I wanted to mask just a shape big enough for a message, I could do that first and then stamp across that going all the way around. So with this plan, you might decide how large your piece is going to be and if you wanted to do a framed uh, panel and your frame was 8 by 10 start with the paper that big and plan it out on scrap paper so that you kind of know um, how large your layout is going to be. With this one I did tape through the middle that would allow me to do a message down uh, through the center if I wanted and in this one was even larger and again by covering up in the middle, now all the stems are going in, giving me uh, another very large option. On these little paintings, I simply worked around uh, the butterflies to stamp some of the clouds. Over here, the flowers are kind of tricky to paint each little one, so I just did big strokes of yellow first. And when that was dry, <laughs> then I could come back and work the greens in around the edges. And one other um, option, if you have masking tape, I stamped on the masking tape, blotted it, and you can just barely see some of the line work. And if you wanted to do this for a balloon or a kite, the kite shape is pretty easy to cut out of the masking tape. I cut it just to the inside of those lines, and you could see that that would allow me to cover the kite while painting the blue in the background and you could do a little kite in the same way. So if you want to try that, I have used this a couple times and it's still, 
uh, sticky and comes away okay. Um, another little option here with uh, my trees, um, I simply took a torn piece of paper because it was an irregular edge and I stamped the trees across that mask of just scrap paper and now I have some beautiful shrubs in the foreground. Next I want to show you how we're going to use this fine line masking fluid pen. And in one of the earlier countdown videos I explained why I chose this one over all the other masking type fluids that are on the market. And I love this one because of its incredible fine tip. So when you remove the cap there's a wire that goes down inside this metal chute here. And this allows me to get a really fine line. So I did this one ahead um, and basically I have I went all the way around inside my black um, uh, line of the balloon and then it filled in quite a lot um, to fill in that whole area and when it's wet you can hardly see it but this one now has dried which gives you that slight blue tint but now I want to show you how I can get these little tiny um, spots here to look like confetti it's such a fine tip that I can simply touch it around here to the sides and that gives me all of these um, interesting little tiny details. I could write with it, all sorts of things. And the key is now that that little wire that's in the cap is going to go straight down in to the chute and you put the cap back on, it's going to seal it, keep it from drying out and be ready to use the next time. So while this is drying, I won't make you wait, <laughs> I will move to this one uh, that has dried already. I can touch it, it feels kind of rubbery. And now we can have some fun doing some quick washes over the top and preserve the white of the balloon. I'll check that my brush is clean. We'll get some nice beautiful blue here for the sky. Ooh, this will be nice. Okay, so I'm starting up here. Create an interesting shape. Maybe we'll go some lighter down here. I'll get some more water on my brush. So now I can paint all the way across the masking fluid that's dry. While it's still wet, I'll kind of get a little bit darker color up here at the top. Okay, so that should be a fun little sky. Now this will have to dry completely before you want to remove the uh, masking uh, fluid that's there. So set it aside and let it dry. So on this card, after it was dry, you're able to simply rub off all of the uh, the masking fluid and we'll do that with another one later but then it allowed me to come back in and paint my rainbow um, on the balloon and I would suggest that you paint the red skip a space do the yellow skip a space and do the blue and let the three of those dry and then come back in in the in-between colors that way it'll keep each of the colors um, from running together and you'll get a beautiful striping for your rainbow so let's do a little bit of painting on this one. Again, I worked ahead and let it dry. So now let's do a beautiful vivid sky. I'm going to start with some blues up here and get this beautiful marine blue. And then let's add some more of our phthalo blue. 
Woo, that's well let's add a little bit of that and then we'll move it around here. So now I don't have to worry about painting around each of the kites and with my wet on wet approach I can let all of these kind of mix in together create my puffier sky down here before I get to the hillside. I could see that was drying a little bit lighter so while it's still wet on wet I might be able to lift a little bit of that. I might need to also blot it or it might just fill in again. It's a good little tip. And again you'd need to clean your brush and dry it a bit to lift away with a clean paper towel. Okay, and then over here this looked a little bit awkward, so I'll wet that area a little bit more. Okay, so that's allowing some fun washes to happen up there in the sky. And now I'll come back to my greens. So I've got some nice, it's gotten a little bit dry. Whoops, got lucky there, put my hand right into the sky while it was still wet. <laughs> okay. So now I will start with some lighter greens and this, um, the masking fluid allows me to do these broad washy strokes that are going to all blend together beautifully since I'm not trying to paint around each of those little tiny flowers. So I go light in the distance and then I get more vivid color in the foreground. And then I'll dip into my other olive -y color. Not very olive -y, but I want some nice darks behind these flowers to really make them pop when we remove the masking fluid. Kind of do little dots of color. And again, I'm assuming my sun is over here, and so I go a little bit richer colors on this side and more vivid colors in the foreground. Okay, we don't want it to be all even, we just want interesting. And since this area up here is dry, I'll show you doing our little shadows here on the fence. And that makes it look like the sun came out. That first stroke is kind of big and I could just leave it alone. But if I come in with a dry, damp brush, I may be able to... There we go, take away just a little bit of that extra paint. Okay, so now this needs to dry before I can come back in and paint the kites. And so I'm going to set this one to the side. You can see how each one is going to come out a little bit different. And that's the fun of it. But over here, this one was dry already. And I had removed some of the, the masking pen from here. But now it's still on this area, so let me show you. I'm just doing a, a rolling motion here with a clean finger, <laughs> and it all comes off like little uh, rubber cement here. And all these little bits will just brush away, and that gives me the finished result there of using the fine line pen to do some masking. And you'll be able to see a lot of fun ways that you can make use of this and get the full use of everything in the bottle because of that wonderful fine line tip and putting the needle back in to seal it up so that it will um, not dry out while you're working with it. So we've introduced a lot of new fun ways to work with the stamps and the masking in this class and next week we're going into taping the edges and we'll do some beautiful sky things. And again, I used the masking uh, fluid pen just to do little stars in the sky. So we'll so show you some more ideas with that in the next class, 104, next Friday.